Zero Accounting Software 2023 Inventory Tracking Options. Get ready to become an accounting hero with Zero 2023. So we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the below, new company file. We set up in a prior presentation that all of the content on guitars. our website After broken out up by category. Files, we talked about broken out in by the course, beginning balances from an organized accounting system. In a logical, reasonable fashion, prior to making it much more easy to find zero, what you need than can be done down those on a YouTube page. We also to make the data input forms as such as easy Excel as practice possible. problems, so PDF if I jump files on over and to more the items that like we are going to be adding files that begin balances. So once the financial again, click the link items below we want to for a free place, month membership, but we will not be doing so with our just website a journal and entry all the content because we want to think it. about the added needs for each of these accounts as we do the data input. So now we're looking at the inventory assets. So this is the number for inventory, which if we added just as a journal entry wouldn't give us the backup information which is the subsidiary ledgers breaking out that information by inventory item and cost of those inventory items in the prior presentation we looked at the service items which are used to populate the sales receipts and the in the invoices but they don't have the added complexity of the inventory items. In a future presentation, we will start to add the inventory items, same process, but adding a level of complexity because now we have the purchases to deal with, as well as the tracking of uh, the inventory and the beginning balance of the items needing to tie out to this here. Before we do that, however, we first want to think about in inventory in general, because a lot of times people have misconceptions in terms of how they're going to be tracking inventory within an online system like uh, a zero system. And you might think that you have to use a certain kind of method, the default method, a perpetual inventory method, but that is not necessarily the case. It kind of depends on what you are doing. So the general idea, if we go on over to zero, the options for tracking the inventory would be one, a full inventory method, in which case you're gonna be using the inventory tracking within zero. That's gonna be what we call a perpetual inventory tracking method. So every time you purchase something, as well as every time you sell something, it will be tracking not only the dollar amount, but also the, the inventory. So that's when you have invoices, the bills and uh, you receive money in like a cash register type of situation. You can also, however, use a periodic inventory system, in which case you're gonna say, hey, look, I'm gonna track inventory outside of the accounting system, possibly in an Excel worksheet or some other inventory tracking program. And then within the zero accounting system, I'm not gonna turn on the perpetual inventory, but simply record sales with the invoices and the received payment in a similar fashion as I would if they were service items. And then I will make an inventory adjustment periodically from my external inventory tracking method, another app or Excel or some other kind of spreadsheet program. So those are the general options. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with inventory is a lot of people these days have the online stores like a Shopify or they sell stuff on Amazon or eBay or something like that. Again, you have inventory needs in that case, but oftentimes you're not gonna want to oftentimes track the inventory within zero uh, because you have inventory tracking to some degree in terms of units in the other software. And oftentimes it becomes a tedious type of thing when you when you have a lot of different items oftentimes is the case with these kind of stores. So what you wanna do is try to determine how you're gonna be tracking inventory and, and pull that in periodically. Uh, we might go into more detail on those particular type of situations on some different methods at a future course or section, but just keep in mind you have different kind of integrations you might wanna put in play with those items now your other option if you want more advanced inventory tracking because the inventory tracking within zero is somewhat limited so if you have a whole lot of different inventory items for example or different locations that you need to track inventory for and complex inventory tracking numbers then you might need a whole separate inventory tracking application which can basically be a supplement or possibly integrated uh, within the zero system so now you have another 
software, which is helping you to kind of manage the inventory that can integrate within the Zero system. So for example, if I hit the drop down here and I go down to the app store, just so you could check that out, then you can go into, you can see down here some cloud-based inventory management software and whatnot. Now, if you're going to have an integration, you want to make sure you do your research to figure out what the best integrations are uh, as, you're, as you're pulling this information into the system. Where's the inventory going to be tracked? Is it going to be in, a, in another system? How are you going to track it within the actual zero? Are you going to use a perpetual system or a periodic system? And then, as you know, like with Shopify and other online stores, there's often integrations involved there. But again, you want to be quite careful because uh, the question on those types of situations is often, do you want to pull in all the sales information? Do you want to pull in all the inventory situation and track it within zero on a perpetual inventory tracking method and have all the different customers and whatnot in place, which is often overwhelming the system. And again, zero might not have really the inventory tracking needs you need for more complex inventory. And it's still complex. If you try to pull in transaction by transaction, more likely you're going to be using some kind of periodic inventory system. And you're going to be using software possibly to group and batch the sales so that it can come from the sales location which is happening on the cloud into uh into your system uh into your system in a grouped format instead of trying to recreate all the data which is actually on the other location so with the shopify's and those external stores you can uh, zero can work quite well as a software to help you to compile and create your financial statements but uh, you, you're typically going to want some kind of integration oftentimes. And again, you want to put some thought into exactly what that integration is going to look like. Otherwise, you end up with basically a mess. Same with the inventory in general. Any kind of inventory you're tracking, you want to think about how exactly do you want to do that? Do you want to turn on perpetual inventory tracking? In which case, you have to, you have to basically go into your products and services and put each of those inventory items into your system here or again you might track them externally in a software and in excel and then basically when you purchase inventory you increase inventory and then periodically based on the physical count of inventory you have and your excel worksheet or your external inventory you can figure the dollar amount of inventory using the inventory method or calculation beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory gives you the cost of goods sold and you can do periodic adjustments on a monthly basis or possibly simply on a yearly basis for if you're in the United States to help you out with your tax uh, preparation for income tax uh, preparation. Now let's just take a quick look at a flow chart. This is actually a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but the, we're just looking at the flow. The process is the same uh, for most accounting systems, right? We just want to think about how the inventory is going to flow through the system. So inventory is one of those things that actually is going to touch on the vendors or the purchasing area, the sales or the expense cycle, money out cycle, and the customers cycle or the revenue or sales cycle or money in ultimately cycle. So obviously we're going to be purchasing inventory up top, which we might do with starting with a purchase order, maybe or maybe not starting with a purchase order, depending on the situation or, and, or we can have a bill or write a check purchasing the inventory. As we purchase the inventory, we normally put it on the books as an asset instead of expensing it. That's the confusing thing about inventory because we want to be recording the expense related to inventory when we sell it, not when we purchase it. That's an accrual kind of concept which complicates our normal cash-based kind of system, which is usually easier, which is something we can... But the purchase side is still on a cash-based system in that when I buy the inventory, that triggers the transaction that's going to record an increase to the inventory, which is an asset account instead of an expense account. Now, if I have a perpetual inventory tracking system within zero on, it will also create a sub ledger breaking out the inventory by inventory item as well. Then when we sell the inventory with like an invoice or like at a cash register, a money in kind of transaction, then uh, we're, the, the sales transaction gets more complex because if I'm using a perpetual inventory system, 
I'm recording the sales price and and, and the, the, the payment that we're gonna be receiving, cash, for example, in a similar way as if you're checking something out at a grocery store, you see that side, but the system knows the other side, which would be a reduction to the inventory and a recording of the expense related to that inventory called cost of goods sold, which it will record on the financials as well as the sub ledger decreasing the inventory at that point in time. So you can see that's a much more complex transaction, even though the data input on the invoice would be easy if you had everything set up properly within the system, which gets a little bit, you know, complex to get all the items set up in the system. Now, if you if you have an external system within Excel, what would happen is when you sell the inventory, you would simply not record the decrease in inventory, not record the related cost of goods sold, treat it just like a service item, and then periodically at the end of the week or month, for example, or possibly year, you take a look at your ending inventory physical count that you're tracking and make the appropriate adjusting entry, reducing inventory, recording the cost of goods sold based on the physical count that you made. That's why it's a periodic inventory system. So also note that when you're dealing with inventory, you're gonna have to deal with flow assumptions usually because unless you have a very, very custom inventory system, meaning you make custom things so you know exactly which thing you sold. Usually, if you look at if you look at like a Shopify store or something, you're buying a bunch of stuff that's all the same, and then you're selling quantity, trying to sell higher quantities of the same thing. So in that case, as you buy the quantity of the stuff and mark it up and then sell it, or make it and sell it, or whatever, all the end units are the same, but the cost of those units could change over time, most likely going up, due to inflation so then when you sell the inventory units you have the question of a conversion question just like going from a metric system to the to the u.s system you know like feet to meters or something right you have to figure out well i have the units of inventory i have to convert those to the cost or dollar amount of inventory and they cost different amounts over time due to usually increasing prices in part because of inflation so the flow assumptions are first in, first out, and weighted average are the common flow assumptions. You also have last in, first out, but that's not really one that's used in practice other than for taxes oftentimes. So we're gonna use basically a perpetual inventory system here in our practice problem, tracking it within zero, but note that you want to think through what the best inventory system is for you put the time in to do that. Uh, in your practice or in your business or in your client's business. Also, if you are a practitioner, a bookkeeper, you wanna think about what clients you wanna specialize in. Do you wanna specialize in clients that have a particular type of inventory like Shopify people or Amazon and get into get really good at those integrations? Do you wanna be a specialist in tracking inventory within the system or specialist in periodic inventory tracking? And that can help you kind of target who your best clientele would be are you the type of bookkeeper that wants to try to automate everything uh, or make something as as easy as possible? Uh, and what size of client do you want? If you get into more complex inventory needs for larger companies, you can start to get uh, professional or, or get a specialization in integrating more complex inventory applications that meet the needs of more complex inventory uh, situations.